Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some mushrooms and a few little butterflies. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Your valentine. I know, my valentine for how many years now? It's been a uh... while. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, I've got my canvas all ready and prepped. This is a 9 by 12 inch Frederick's Mixed Media Canvas Board. I've painted it with a very light coat of Burnt Sienna. put about that much little dollop on here with a little bit of gloss glazing liquid or matte medium or something like that to make it stick and then used a watered down paper towel to just wipe it on so it's very transparent. Um, but that's all I've done to it. And I've kind of sketched out sort of generally where I want my mushrooms to be with some chalk. Um, I'm going to paint the background over all of this, but I just kind of wanted to see if I wanted to add any other ones. It was kind of last minute changing up my composition. So let's go over our colors real quick. Got a very limited kind of palette tonight. It's got carbon black, burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone, Magenta, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Yellow Light, Thalo, Tur um, no, this is Thalo Green Yellow Shade, um, or you could use Thalo Turquoise. Uh, this one is Ultramarine Blue, Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White, and Gloss Glazing Liquid. Um, or matte medium, just something that's got a little bit of an extender in case we do any glazing or any thin coats or something. Um, as far as brushes go, I'm going to want a, um, these are all Princeton brushes. Uh, this is a Deerfoot Select um, 5 8 inch, so I'll be using that mostly in the background. I've also got a 12 Bright in the 6100 series um, for a lot of the background, just blocking in some larger shapes. And then um, a six flat and a two round. So those will be kind of our main brushes. We may pull in some other brushes as we go. I think I'll probably need a liner brush too. This is a script liner and I may use one of the blenders too. So these are the Velvet Touch and the red handles. Um, and I've got links down in the description to buy materials if you mm -hmm. need it and then just some regular chalk for drawing on your canvas. You don't want to use pencil on a canvas usually because um, it will show up through your can your paint. That graphite doesn't really cover up. 38. 30, 38 years as Valentine's. I like it. Yeah, because we're 35 years married this summer. Is that right? Ooh, I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 Which, <laughs> sad are we old? I used to count so religi re religiously like I would get mad if Mark didn't know exactly how long we were married and now it's like I'm the one like how long has it been but where were you 20 years ago today we were in Paris 20 years Ooh, ago Paris. yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we were we, we. <laughs> it was fun I can't believe it's been that long We were at the top of the Eiffel Tower on Valentine's Day. Okay. All right. Um, getting some green here. Uh, my background is kind of a green, mossy green kind of. I think I'm going to make it a little bit more on the teal side. So I'm going to grab my green, a little bit of burnt sienna, and my ultramarine blue. Mix those three together. Mostly green. Just a little bit of the other two colors. And I'm just going to kind of mainly you just sort of want to have a general idea of where your mushrooms are going to sit, which are about right on the third or maybe just a little bit below the third um, on our canvas. So this upper part is where I'm going to put this darker green and then we'll put our mushrooms. We'll have a little bit lighter color at the bottom here where the mushrooms are going to sit. So again, not really too concerned. I was just trying to decide. I think I'm going to add a different kind because the I had uh, originally I had a red mushroom in the middle here and then I decided to change it because we'd already painted 
that particular mushroom last time. Um, so I'm trying to kind of do different ones. If you missed the first one that we did in the series, um, in, we did it last fall. It was really one of my favorite paintings that we did last year. Um, and so, and then I, um, there's just so many different varieties of mushrooms and you see them everywhere right now. They're very trendy. So, um, I don't generally like pick my paintings because they're trendy, you know, I mean, it's not really my first main, obviously, because the macarons did not <laughs> do well say. at all. Like macarons? Like macarons are not. <laughs> apparently, nobody nobody maybe, cares about them. Maybe if you painted we macarons. We had like three people watch that video what, last tank. week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I was going to say, the only, the only video I think that's done worse in the last few years is the tank video. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, basically, so macarons and tanks are like Wonder Twins. <laughs> no, no go, no, no go. All right, all right. Getting some unbleached titanium, adding it to my green, and then I'm adding a little bit more ultramarine blue. So it's got like a little bit of smoky blue, and some of this burnt sienna to neutralize it. And we'll do that kind of in this mid ground here. And you can see I'm just using this brush and doing kind of these X. X strokes here, um, not really blending anything necessarily, just, and leaving some of that background color showing a little bit too, so. Quick question about the paint. Yes. Uh, somebody would like to know, uh, what could they use in place of the phthalo green yellow shade? Well, if you have phthalo blue, you can mix phthalo green with just about any any yellow, um, you're going to get something similar. So, so thalo, thalo blue, blue or thalo turquoise, okay. um, any of those will make a, the thalos are pretty easy to mix. You know, you pretty much just need one and then you can, <laughs> Okay. I mean, it won't be exact. Um, I would say thalo blue. If you're going to buy one, I would buy thalo blue because you can do more with it or buy like a thalo turquoise and then you can kind of mix both. It's sort of in the middle, but, um, Anyhow. All right, gotcha. and then getting more of the burnt sienna here, maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium, a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna, unbleached titanium, and burnt umber. And Fitzy's growling in the background. Mm -hmm. What? <coughs> That he must hear something outside we yeah, don't hear. Just, I'm, just, I'm gonna growl, but I'm not gonna actually go investigate because no, I'm, I'm too I'm not being gonna get lazy up. right now. Dad took me on a walk and I'm tired. <laughs> He's uh, adapting to his owners. <laughs> gonna make some noise, but I'm not, not actually gonna get up. Not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, there we go. So with the bottom, just kind of a brownish color. We're gonna be putting lighter greens obviously on here, but um, this is just kind of a starting point. And I definitely need to go a lot darker with my background. So this is my, kind of my initial color, um, initial couple layers really. And then I need to make sure that that's dry before I do my next step. I'm gonna get a little bit of Burnt umber, so this time it's burnt umber, which will give me a little bit darker color than the burnt sienna did. So then I'm mixing that with these two, green and... And I might even add a little bit of magenta, and that'll make it a little bit more of a purpley green, which will darken it even more. And I just need to make sure that that's dry enough. It might lift over here. Let's see what we do. And I'm just going to maybe get a little bit of glaze because I just want this to go on kind of lightly. I don't want to cover everything up. There we go. That'll work. And I'm just going to kind of brush it around in circles. Just create kind of some nebulous, 
dark areas in here, just giving it a little bit of contrast here and there. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. Just looking at my background and seeing that there's some like looks like kind of like light kind of coming through the trees or something maybe. Who knows what's going on back here? It's all blurry and out of focus anyways, so I'm just kind of trying to create an interesting backdrop for our mushrooms to live. Looks pretty good. Channeling your bob there. Good job. Channeling my bob? Yeah. What do you mean? You're saying making an interesting place for my mushrooms to live. Is that what he would just say? It just reminded me of something that he would say. Yeah. This may be where my trees live. That's what he would say. You know, he would be like, maybe one lives over here. <laughs> He's got a neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everybody needs a friend. <laughs> I know I watched him. We watched him together actually a couple a couple of years ago, you know, when they had that um, kind of resurgence of his videos and Netflix started carrying his videos, you know, so I watched a few and I was just like, yep, there's a reason that it brought me back. I watched them all the time when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Definitely brought me back. It's like, there's a reason he was so popular. He's just had a relaxing demeanor. Very enjoyable. Peaceful. All right. So that looks good. I'm going to have to let that dry. Kind of like you, relaxed. Relaxing. Yeah, mm. people fall asleep quite often. That's true. Watching That's true. your videos. So. Yeah. That's true. I, uh, you market them. You're too narrowly marketed. You should put it out there as <laughs> sleep aid or something. You know? I should. <laughs> I laugh too much though because and then yeah. it, uh, wake people up because I, I laugh so loud. I've probably been talking too much too. I have a loud laugh. Yeah, you you definitely talk too much. Jeez, I ruined this video already. Sorry, how, haters. How rude. <laughs> Hashtag silence. <laughs> Hashtag I'm being repressed. <laughs> Hashtag doing it on purpose. <laughs> I'm adding yellow and green, making this uh, bright like lime green. And then adding the burnt sienna to it to tone it down to a more neutral. You could also add the red to it. Um, that would do the same thing. You know, gives it just mutes the color a little bit. All right. It looks pretty good. And I'm going to use this to create some grasses and things in here. So kind of behind the big... Uh, mushroom that's going to go here. There's some tall grasses that are coming around here and then there's going to be a butterfly like right in here sort of offset from the middle. There's kind of this big morel mushroom sort of in the middle and then this butterfly, butterfly three here and then right here I'm going to have these tall grasses. Now this is one thing I I didn't I said I wasn't going to do a <laughs> A mini lesson this time because we've got more you know to go over tonight um, but if we did a mini lesson this was what I was going to do and um, have you do for homework if you want to let me get a little bit of white adding that to this because I can't see these across um, from the uh, in the background there over the top there we go um, but doing, doing line work like this is really helpful to getting familiar with just using brushes in general. Um, the line br liner brush is one of the most, um, hated brushes, I would say. <laughs> most difficult. I'll let this dry a little bit. Actually, let me let you take that and dry it, honey, okay. while I do this. I'll go ahead and do one. Sorry, that's a lesson for a different, different day. All right, so let's do our little, um, 
line work. We'll do a little box for our homework to go in. You really, you can do this on anything. Um, um, we'll call it lines. So the one thing you want is, one, you need fluid paint. Two, you need a thin, flexible brush. And three, you need to be holding it upright. And I'm sure I'll think of other ones as I go, but those will be the first three to go over. So fluid paint has to be at least milky consistency, very, very thin. 90% of the problems people have with line brush is that they have their paint too thick. Um, if your paint is too thick, it will stick to your brush. You should be able to, um, you can test it on your thing, your thing. You should have absolutely no pressure and it should come off really easily. So if you are having to press down at all, to get that paint off your brush, you will not get thin lines. Okay, then the other thing is if you have a brush that does not come to a good thin point, it will not magically happen on the canvas. It has to be pointy, thin, um, and the width of your brush will determine the width of your line. So um, if it is really thick and doesn't come to a thin point, you're never going to get a thin line. Um, and then also um, holding it upright in the proper way. So very similar to when we were doing that, that um, uh, a couple weeks ago, we were doing the... Um, where was it? This one here where we're talking about the brush strokes and how you have to hold it upright, perpendicular to the canvas. Same thing with this. If you hold your liner brush at a lazy angle and try to get a straight line out of it, you will not be able to because um, it it can't bend and flex um, properly. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I'm holding it um, just like a pencil would, right? And I'm going to try to do a circle with it. Once I get around to this point right here, if I'm not holding my brush up over that edge, that brush is going to fling out on its own. I can't get any kind of traction on it. So what I have to do is hold it up so that just the tip is touching the can the 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 canvas or the paper and guide it around, but always keeping my hand, I haven't, I haven't really flexed my wrist at all much, right? I'm moving the tip of the brush. So you're just guiding that tip of the brush around. I'm moving my whole hand. So I say I'm not moving my hand, I'm not moving my fingers. I'm in some of the other brush strokes, you know, we were twisting and pushing away and doing all this stuff. I'm getting a good firm grip on my brush. I'm not holding it too tightly because if I hold it too tightly, it's my hand's going to shake and I'm going to have tension there that I don't want to, it'll come across in, in the brush. So I'm holding it in a relaxed way, but I'm not moving my fingers at all. I'm holding them um, steady and I'm using this part of my hand to guide my wrist. So I need to have like a, a smooth motion here and you can just practice it. Um, uh, well, let's just go ahead and do it on our paper. So we're showing the proper way of doing it, but you see how my hand is lining up with the canvas. This is perpendicular to the canvas surface. That way I can keep control and my, the movement is coming from my whole arm. It's actually coming from back in here in my elbow. My whole arm is moving, um, to get this. Sometimes I will just, if it's a small motion, like a small subject, I can kind of move my fingers in a, in a circular motion, but really you're going to get the best results if you move your whole hand. So let's just go ahead and practice a few lines. You can do some that are, um, straight up and down, uh, do some curved ones. Um, in our grasses, we're going to be doing curved lines. Um, and then do some wiggly lines and try to keep your pressure the same all the way through. Okay, then do some where you're maybe starting with it a little bit heavier and then going thinner. 
with it. Okay, so maybe some of them are like this. Maybe we would use something like this in a flower or something like that. Okay, so try just a few different shapes. Um, let's do some, some, some circles. So I'm going to, I'm not going to get a very good circle probably without drawing it out ahead of time, but you get close, get it as close as I can. Um, do that. Try doing some stuff where you're maybe doing some branches. So do some out here um, and then do some that connect and see if you can get these connections to not show, right? Try, try to... Um, get your connections. I'm going to start on the line and move out from it, but not press down at all so that I am going to have no little overlap there. If I start on the line and kind of go with it and then break off from it, I kind of have a better, I, better chance of getting how much paint on the brush. Okay. Um, not a lot. I don't want it I, I, I want enough control so that it is not, I'm getting a point on my brush. So it's full, it's full all the way to the ferrule. I'm filling it up with quite a bit of paint. These long, the longer the script liner, the less control you'll have, but the longer line you can do smoothly. So it's just kind of a matter of, of, uh, what, what, uh, <laughs> you know, you give up, um, control for, um, well, let's just show you for the length of line. So say this is a, let's see, let me get a short liner and also a thinner liner. So this one is a, nope, that's a one round. Come on. I know I have liners in here. There we go. A 10 aught short liner or 18 aught short liner. So this one is much, much thinner. It's going to hold less paint. It's also not as long. All right. So this will show you the difference. Oh, shoot. I just got some water on there. And let's go ahead and do one of each. So I'll do one with the long line and see how far I can go with it. And then I'll do one with the short liner and see how far I can get with it. Now we'll be able to get much, much thinner lines with my short liner, but you can see I got fairly thin lines with this big, big one, but I've practice with that I'm used to working with it so I know kind of how to um, how to work it so I'm going to go ahead and just probably go there and back because I probably I might be able to just go all the way around this box with this one load of brush we'll just see how until we run out yep we're still going we're still going <laughs> and we're we're starting to lose it there okay so we went all the way around that box this one, I probably can make it about halfway, maybe, because it's much shorter. I probably can make it from here to here. So let's try. It's doing okay. Round in the corner. Mm, yeah, and there we're losing it. Okay, so about half, about half the load, um, which isn't bad. Uh, honestly, that did better than I thought it would. Um, so... But that means you're going to have to reload that brush twice as long, twice as often. And as soon as it starts breaking up on you, you need to reload it because that means that the paint inside is getting dry and it's just not going to um, give you good results after that. You're not going to be able to control it. And you're, what's going to happen is you're going to end up pushing down harder because you're like, oh, there's no line showing up. So I got to press down harder and I'll just do some very thin lines. See if you can do, you know, how many you can do. See how thin you can get them into infinity there. Okay. So there's some little practice dealies for you to do. I know there's a million other ones that you can do with the liner brush. Um, but, uh, that'll give you something to work with and liner line work. Um, use whatever brushes you've got. You can use round brushes too. Round brushes can make thin lines, maybe not as thin, but they can still make decently thin lines for you. So, um, work with that. Hold your brush, hold your hand upright. That's usually the problem is, um, your paint's too thick and you're not holding your brush upright. Um, and you, it, it really does matter having a good brush, like a good quality brush. Where's my canvas? Right Thank Is you. There really no, can they use a medium to thin it or use a fluid? Um, mediums kind of tend to make the paint a little bit gummy. Uh, 
But if you have a fluid, um, a, 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 a thinner that makes the paint more fluid, that that can help. Yeah. But um, I don't generally use um, a lot of thinners with it. Um, not a lot, at least. Just a little tiny bit will do. Um, but yeah, you can. And the, like the more fluid acrylics will work? Yes, the fluid acrylics would be my first choice. Uh, you know, if you have a fluid acrylic, like um, these are going to give you really good results. So I'll just go ahead and use this. This is a green gold and it's a great color. It's actually pretty similar to what we've been Make trying to mix. Audible. So we'll go ahead and use that. She's went to the bullpen early. Uh huh. Went to the bullpen early. And this is one is fluid too that I'm starting with here. The green that I'm starting with is already fluid. So whoops, a little dab there. So I'm just, when I'm doing grass, I'm going to be, um, creating an arc. So, um, I want to have these kind of clusters where the paint, the paint is coming out from a single line. Oh, I just made a mess there on that. Well, let's just put something over there. This will, this will give me a, a chance to so you're going to kind of create maybe not that from a single stock. That's more from a single stock. But when you're doing grasses, you're going to have like a clump. You're going to kind of go from here to here and you're going to want to arc it from here to here. All right. So your grasses are going to do like this from within this like little space here. And they're going to do this whole um, kind of crazy crisscrossy, make sure you're not doing them all like a spoke on a bicycle or something like that. But that's kind of generally what we're going to be doing when we're doing grasses. So um, lots of overlapping, but within a kind of a, you know, that's control, yeah, confined area. Yeah, a little controlled area. Like how grass actually grows. Right, exactly. That's They grow in those little cl clumps and they kind of flare out. So, And I'm just going to use this and quickly do several. Maybe some taller ones. And with grass, more is more. So you really kind of can't overdo it, I don't find. You know, you really kind of need more to make it look good. If you do too few, it just kind of looks contrived. So and you're just going fast and that kind of gives it more than holding. Natural and look, I, right? this time I'm holding my brush pretty far out and, but I'm still up over the canvas and by kind of flicking it, I, um, it's, it's going to, naturally taper right. okay. for me. So I've got some shorter mushrooms in here, so I'm not, I don't want to crowd those, but right in here, I've got this really long, tall piece of grass that I want to really show up. So I want to do a couple really tall ones right in here. A couple coming out this way. I don't like that. Just kind of got too close together there, so I'm just going to wipe that off. If you get it while it's still wet, it'll come right off. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, then I'm going to use my blender here and grab that color, maybe a little bit more white, maybe some unbleached titanium, a little bit of green. So I just have kind of a couple of different tones on my brush here, so... And I'm just going to kind of dab and tap and create some little mossy. Maybe if I kind of like set my brush down and flick it upward a little bit, I'll get like slight little mossy looking areas. Leave plenty of this brown showing. Can 
use a you could use a fan brush for this too if you don't have one of these. A fan brush works about the same. Okay. I'm gonna get some darker color. Do some darker at the bottom of some of these. There's a lot of a lot of uh, light green. You want to make sure you kind of got, you know, different values in your greens. So I don't want like just all light greens. I want like a little bit of the darker too, maybe. And right here, we're just kind of creating some ground for our grasses to live in. You know, it. If we don't have something underneath them that kind of anchors it, it'll, they kind of tend to look like they're just floating. So you're saying that they're grounded? <laughs> yes. They've okay. been to therapy. They're very self-aware grasses. <laughs> Are they free range? <laughs> free range. Organic. Organic. Fully organic. All right, that looks good. That'll give us a good backdrop. We're kind of just setting the stage for our, the star of our show, which are our mushrooms. I am going to grab a fan brush, though, and I'm going to do some splattering before we start. And I'll probably do some splattering at the end, too, but it'll kind of give us a good base here. I'm just going to, same with splattering, you're going to want fluid. Very thin, can tap it. If it doesn't come off pretty easily when you tap it, then you probably have too, too much thickness in your paint. If it comes off in big globs, then you have too much water. So you kinda just want a happy medium of just right. So I was thinking that when you're doing the liner brush and the, the grasses, mm -hmm. the, the paint, you want it to be fluid almost like an ink. Yes. Coming out of one of those old quill pens. Absolutely. You know, if and if you have gummy, acrylic ink, you can use that. Okay, it works yeah. really well. It'll just flow off. You right. You don't want it Absolutely. coming up and stopping You up. shouldn't have to put any pressure on it at Got all. It. Got it. Because you just want the very tip of the brush to be doing the work, and the paint should flow off of it, just like, yeah, just like an ink pen. <sighs> Good point. All right. Dry, dry, dry. I'm going to get my thing out here. Are there any questions while we're going to do this? Any pertinent questions? No, nope, we answered them all. All right. Hope you guys are doing well. I didn't say hi. Welcome. Happy Valentine's Day. Glad. Hopefully we have a few people watching. I know it's kind of probably not a great night for... <laughs> I, I contemplated canceling it, but I'm like, well, no, we're not going out on a Tuesday night. So <laughs> that is not happening. Might have... No, I don't think ever, because we had kids, and they had to be at school, so. Yeah. <laughs> Mark still has a full-time job, so. <laughs> yeah, so do you. But, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do, too, but I get to be at home oh, for yeah. mine. Yeah, you don't have to I drive. I have to go, no, drive and an I can sleep in tomorrow if I have, you know, if I Okay, I'm muting your to. mic. Hold on. What? I'm muting your mic. You're, you're speaking <laughs> mean things here. I'm saying mean things. <laughs> I'm picking on you. <laughs> I'll just get to you know, sleep in. I don't have to drive. No. I, I fully understand how lucky I am <laughs> not to have to drive. So while you're doing, you're just sketching. Okay, I'm just sketching my mushrooms. I know I want. To, I usually start with my larger ones and then kind of fit my smaller ones in and around. I'll do my morel one kind of right in here. I think they're fairly large, and it's kind of kind of got a curve right here where it comes in, and then the stalk is fairly thick there. And then I think right in here I want to fit in three, there are these little mushrooms called glass, I can't remember the name, glass something mushrooms, but they're like these really shiny green, thought they might be kind of fun ones to do, so I'll do three of those right there, and they have like a yellow stalk, so I thought that would be cute there, 
I might move them down a little bit, but somewhere in there. And then these ones, oh, I can't remember the names of these. I was, this one's called a death cap. Okay. This one's morale. Okay. This one is, I don't remember. Bob. And Bob. <laughs> and his friends, Bill and Phil. Bill and Phil. <laughs> So, our butterflies are triangle shapes here. Right there and there. And then make this a little. I can't remember what these ones are called. I'm trying to see if I can. We could maybe do some little, I think they're called chantillies, the little white ones that kind of grow in a cluster. Maybe fit those down there, possibly. That'll give us kind of some movement. We'll see. So this one's a little bit move. I, when I'm trying to com compose something like this and kind of picking what mushrooms to use, I'm looking at the shapes and trying to make sure that I have kind of a variety of different shapes and um, sizes and things. So I kept finding new ones. I'll probably do another one of these because I keep finding mushrooms that I want to paint. So if you guys like them, it all depends on if anybody watches this. If it's like the macarons, maybe we won't. <laughs> and uh, I Macarons, I have to say that that was a good blending lesson. So if you want to learn about blending, you might just watch that one. I don't know. Even if you're not interested in macarons, you might learn I mean, something who about blending. It be? I mean, come on. What? It's all because we didn't have any here to eat. <coughs> <laughs> That's and, true. That might have gotten people to watch, huh? And before you, the urge overtakes you to actually leave a comment, mm -hmm. we're not saying that these mushrooms actually exist together in the wild. No, don't. This is our own world, so. Yes. Ain't nobody got time for that. No, just, don't. Just live in fantasy with us. Right. This is my own mushroom garden. I grew it myself with my brush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using brown. I've seen some of these that have more of a brownish color, so I'm going to use the brown here. I made a brown with my burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and a little bit of the um, magenta, just to make them a little bit more, a little bit more on the purpley, pur purple toned blue, purple toned brown, I mean. Okay, and I'm using my 3 8 inch Wills blender here do the basic shape. Well, that looks pretty good. I'm going to dab in some dark around the base here. And we'll call that good enough for now. Right. Like that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and use this dark brown color in the stem of this one. So I like to use the same color in other places, you know, especially if it's like a unique color. I'm going to even add a little bit more of this magenta to it. Really emphasize. You can change the colors. You can do whatever you want with yours. So if you want all pink mushrooms, I would say go for it. Do your, your own thing with it. Whatever makes you happy. I got a little bit outside my lines there. I just used my paper towel there and wiped that off. Okay. That looks good. So it kind of does this bulbous thing at the bottom here. Get a little bit more rounded. That's cute. Right, 
and then I'll go ahead and use this brush to do the dark. And I'm going to use that same kind of color, only a little bit more blue this time with my burnt umber, so a little bit more of a bluish tint. Curve it at the bottom here. It's like a little bell shape. And quite pointy on top. And then this one I'm going to make more straight up and down. Same thing with this one. And this one's a little bit bigger than this one, but not as big as that one. Okay, that's good. I think I'm going to make this a little bit more rounded. There we go. Okay, I'm going to use this color and just darken up some of the center of my morel mushroom. Because I have to add some lighter colors, so I want to make sure I have a good dark base for it. And also go really dark up in here. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Let's get some unbleached titanium. And I'm gonna add some burnt sienna to it, just a little bit. I'm going to use that to paint in my mushrooms, or my butterflies. So... Is it going on kind of soupy? Take off the extra moisture out of my brush there. So you've got kind of a angle here, right there, and then this wing kind of does the circle over the top. It circles back around. Ends up with this triangle kind of shape. Well, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do the stems. I'm going to switch to a two round here and do my stems. So I'm going to go ahead and get that burnt sienna with the unbleached titanium. Some more of it. Come on. I'm using this round brush just like I do the liner. I'm holding it pretty close up to the end and I'm making sure that I'm staying up over my line so that I'm getting good thin lines from it. 
it's a good habit to form. Doing line work is really good practice for just having good form in holding your brush um, for other things. So I'm getting some of my light green here, some yellow, and pulling in some of this green that we had mixed before too, and mixing it with the unbleached titanium that I was just using. I'm going to use that on these whatever the glass, I think they were called glass. Glass caps, maybe? Green glass caps. I'll look it up. Yeah, I think that's what they were called, or something like that. And then let me get some the green and some ultramarine blue. They're kind of a turquoisey color. They may not show up very well against this though, so I may have to change the color a little bit to make them show up a little bit better. Should have thought that through. There's a Glorious Parrot Wax Cap. Wax Cap? Okay. That may be it. Mm -hmm. Looks like that. Mm. These have a thinner... Yeah, these have a thinner... Okay. Did you look up Glass Cap? Well... If I could spell, I would have. <laughs> There's nothing under Green Glad's Cap. some white here at the bottom and just pulling it up through the wet paint. <laughs> and we're not sampling the mushrooms either, just to let you know. We're, just, we're normally this way. Yeah, no. Oh, I hear the cat purring over there. Well, I got a lot of pictures of actual mushrooms made out of glass, mm. you know, like knickknacks and petty wax. Well, that'll be close enough, I think. Let me get, I'm going to get a little bit smaller angle. This is a blender. And I'm going to get some burnt umber and mix it with this light light color here and I'm going to use it on the stem of this one and I want texture so I'm going to kind of just roughly dry brush not a lot of pressure we talked about dry brushing last week in the blending technique so look that up watch the macaron video oh. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> We're seamless. Um, so I, I don't have a little side things here too. Go for it. You don't have what? So the little white ones are enoki. Enoki. Yeah, like the little ones that you enoki. Ah, oh, okay. In the front there, that bunch okay. together. Right. I'm going to get the light, light color here for the top of this one. Move it down just a little bit. I feel like it's a little, a little high. I have just looked up green mushroom. That's how I found them. Okay. So. Oh, they're bragging about your Googling skills. <laughs> just dismissing. I'm not going to brag or anything. Just saying. just saying I found it much easier than you apparently are finding it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 
see anything. And then you go to images from there. Yeah, that's where I'm at. If anybody in chat can help me out, because I'm not doing well. Not here. finding it. No. Okay. It's fine. I was just curious. It doesn't have to. We don't have to know. I didn't mention what the names were last time, so it's fine. I just. I did want to show my fabric, though. I didn't I didn't include a link but um maybe you can get the link to my Where is it? The fabric or the link? The fabric. It is behind you on the thing there. Right there. Don't get in the bag. No. All right, I'll show you the fabric I created this week. There's two. This one's for this one's butterflies that were from one of my so I have a bunch of butterfly fabric, but this one's a new one, which has green or uh, orange and blue um, butterflies um, on spoon flower. But this one's the one I'm really excited about here. It is mushrooms and ladybugs and some butterflies and bees and snails, feathers. There's a dragonfly up here, a bunch of... Lavender. So that is new, and I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. This is my sample. Um, it's a little bit too saturated in color, a little bit too dark, so I'm going to desaturate it just a little bit. But um, that's on Spoonflower. If you do a search for Spoonflower, Angela Anderson, or Mark's going to try to put one in the link, and I'll put it down in the description. The link um, is there. Oh, yay. And then there's the it on white, but I have several different color color versions. Um, and again, this was actually the practice one, so I had them reprint it. Um, so that's if this is this is not available anymore because I it now has splatters and it has splatters and shadows. Now you can see the new version with the splatters and shadows. And then this one's just. The, not again, not not available, but I do have it on have this version on white too. But anyhow, lots of different fun, and I'll be doing another one with these mushrooms, I'm sure. So, um, it's it's funny. I've had the I was well ahead of the butterfly um, trend, <laughs> like ten years. Okay. When you yeah. When you're that far ahead, you don't sell a lot of it until it becomes popular, and then you start selling a lot of it. And so it's like 2020, Butterflies Fabric was just, like, killing it. And I was like, all of a sudden, this fabric that I've had there for 10 years that has maybe sold, you know, I don't know. Anyhow, it doesn't make a ton. I make, like, 10% of the sales, so it's not, like, a ton of money. Um, on one yard, I think I make like two dollars, maybe, maybe you know. So it's not like I'm gonna retire on this money, but it's fun. And but I I haven't put any work into it because I haven't, you know, it just doesn't sell enough. And then all of a sudden it started selling. So I'm doing some new fabrics for the first time in about ten years <laughs> ish. <laughs> And now if you look for butterfly fabrics, they're everywhere. It was used by somebody in one of those magazines, right? I've had people make headbands out of it, and I had a, I don't know. Wasn't there a designer for one of the magazines used her trip or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on that crafty, um, that making it show, mm -hmm. uh, one of the designers on there. We collaborated on a wa butterfly wallpaper a while back. mushroom? Parrot mushroom, yep. That looks like it right there. That little one right there. Thank you to to Patty for Thank parrot you, Patty. wax cap. Parrot wax cap, thank you. That would have driven me crazy. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna get the lighter color here and I'm just gonna tap in some white along the edge of it. It's not pure white, but you know, close, close. And I may go a little bit darker at the top because it's not 
showing up. Maybe add a little bit of blue to it or something. Um, let's get a little bit of blue. Just to give it a little different color. There is a little bit of blue in the picture that I was looking at. Maybe not this much, but a little bit. There we go. So you just have to have some contrast. That's the main thing, you know. Um, if it's not showing up, you gotta create some contrast somewhere. All right, let's use some of this burnt umber. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this one more layer here, I think. Could use it. I'm gonna get some white, mix that in with color I used previously and I'm going to add just a little bit of blue because I feel like it's got a little bit of a grayness to it like a cooler cooler coloration and I'm not going to put it on fully like solid I'm just going to kind of tap it on so that there's a little bit of irregularity in it and maybe not all the way to the edge because those edges are a little bit darker okay that looks pretty good Let's go ahead and wipe this off, and I'm going to use a little bit of this just to streak a little bit in the center of my morel stock. Okay, now I'm getting that burnt umber, and I'm going to maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm going to make kind of a gray. I'm going to start out with kind of a gray color. Do little dabs with that and this would be the same if we did the red you know if you did a, a toadstool you know with red this is what we did except for you would use red and then a darker red here for your caps and you can watch that other video because I did it on that one but there we go so that, and then I'm going to get the burnt umber, and I'm just going to go above this and dab kind of more intentionally some shapes. Add a little bit of that gray because it's not super dark. There are some dark parts of it though. Just. Well, I bet you can guess what my Google News Feed is going to be filled with for the next few weeks. <laughs> up your google feeds like look up google just can't figure me out what is he interested in all of exactly? a sudden he's interested in <laughs> mushrooms and butterflies okay he's never searched for those before but okay <clears throat> you're welcome on those looks good I think I'm going to do a little bit more brighter kind of right along here maybe where the light's hitting it and it's more rounded right there I'm going to get some burnt sienna and kind of put some of that in there's a lot of different colors going on in this stem 
That looks good. All right, let's put some shadows along this morel mushroom stem. So I'm going to get some burnt umber and add a little bit of glaze to it. And we're going to just add a little darkening right there and maybe a little bit kind of at the ground and along the sides a little bit. Looks good. Looks like there's like a little hollow right here where it goes down in the ground maybe. Like a steam, seam or something. You can just use your finger to blend that out a little bit. That looks good. Let's go ahead and use some of this same color on this these ones and pick a spot so maybe I'll say that this side is going to be darker Go dark right up underneath where it comes out don't be afraid of contrast so don't be afraid of going really dark there if you don't have contrast you don't have depth so don't shy away from getting that full range of values in your paintings you know by range of values I'm talking about these light and darks in every painting I want to shoot for having some of this color and some of this color and everything in between generally you know um, maybe not a lot of these two most of your values should kind of fall in here probably um, but there should be at least some of these really dark extremes, uh, light and dark extremes, to give yourself some depth in your paintings. And if your painting's looking flat, that's one of the first things that usually is the problem um, that I would, you know, have you look at. You know, if you get you done with your painting and you're just like, I don't know, something looks a little bit off, I'm not really sure what's wrong with it, look at it in black and white. Just make the whole thing black and white. And um, that usually always will indicate, you know, real cl real clearly if you have not enough depth. So if you look at something in black and white and there's absolutely no depth in it, so like this one is kind of living in the mid-ranges, <laughs> that whole mushroom is kind of in here. There's not a whole lot of, of, of light and dark in it, so I'll probably need to bump up somewhere some contrast in it so that it um, shows up. So I can either go lighter or darker. I can do both. But um, if I looked at that in black and white right now, it would probably look pretty flat because right now it's looking kind of flat to me. Um, but sometimes it can be hard to see that in color. So sometimes if you just kind of take the color away... Um, then you can see the values a little bit better and realize, you know, where you need to make adjustments in your design, in your painting. All right, going to get some burnt umber and white and unbleached titanium here. It's just kind of a light tan color. I'm going to work on this morel and just... I'm going to kind of start out fairly light. And just kind of wiggle it around. It's got these really cool like little cells. All right, then. Just kind of defining the outline of it. And I'm going to probably glaze back in some darker areas, so I'm not too worried about it, um, the values in it right now. I'm just trying to get some texture in there. So I'm going to start to kind of create these little pockets and then connect them together to create like little webs. Right. So just kind of wiggle it out a little bit and then back up. And then I've got a space here that I can now make another one. And then I've got a space here. And then just keep on doing that. It kind of diamond shapes, sort of. Looks like. All right. Make some bigger than others. 
the ones at the bottom are going to be kind of smaller, maybe. It helps if you've got one to kind of look at. I'm not going really by the photo. I'm just sort of getting it close enough, you know, to the general idea of that I'm seeing. So these ones at the top are smaller, and then they start opening up, getting bigger as they come down. Fun, fun, fun. What did you get for Valentine's Day, honey? I got some gummy savers and a cute card. In a car. A what? <laughs> that wasn't really for Valentine's Day, though. Doesn't count, but I'm going to take credit for it since yeah, I didn't you buy you anything. <laughs> <laughs> but some candy and a card. <laughs> what did you get? I got my new ring. Have fun. I bought that one for myself. That one and some earrings that I'm wearing. Nice. You put your head down in the camera there. Yeah, it's things. okay. <laughs> People wanted to see us kiss on camera for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I told them don't hold their breath. No, it's okay. <laughs> we'll kiss off off screen really loud. You can loud, hear it, yeah. But not like in that one movie. <laughs> what were we watching? What was that? that? That was the one where they were going, the you know the two special ops, husband and brother. Going down to rescue the woman. Oh, that's there. right. That was an Apple TV Echo 3 or Echo something. That was very macho. Blue. Except for when they were kissing. Yeah. And it was like. <laughs> it was literally <laughs> slurping. It was so gross. It's like, who made this? Who, the, obviously, the person who did the sound effects this has never kissed anybody. Or if they did, they have <laughs> a lot of explaining to do because. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so gross. All right, so yeah. All right, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to be adding a little bit of, I don't know if I need this really, but just adding a little, little bit of detail on the inside of some of these where you can kind of see inside of it. Just kind of. Yeah, this one was fun. I like this. Look how this one turned out. Neat looking. All right. Let's work on these ones. So I'm gonna use the same color over here, and we'll do the the little markings on this one and I'm gonna flatten my brush out so that it's a little more squared off and that way I'm getting kind of more angular shapes on mine because I noticed that they're kind of square almost so those are magpie ink caps ink caps okay magpie yes ink caps. magpie ink caps their scientific name is corpronopsis Picacia. Nice. And that's the exact pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to have that dramatic pause when you're saying it to mm -hmm. get the full effect. Picacia. Picacia. P I C A C E A. Mm -hmm. And then some normal human being came, but came by and said, no, it's a magpie ink cap, because everybody can say that. <laughs> I'm not going to try to say that. <laughs> so forever, from yeah. now on, I wish I'll call it a magpie ink cap. Get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they look blue, green shade. You mean blue? Got it. <laughs> Cornacridone. 
<laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I that's that's one that I'm like, really, can they not? But they they name a lot of the the pigments after their you know or the yeah. paints after the pigment name, so that's why they name that. But there are some companies that use pigment quinacridone, but don't call it that. They call it other stuff like rose and stuff like that. Or just magenta. Doing these spots like this, I really find it kind of meditative. Like, I really like doing these kind of paintings because they're simple shapes, and then you have these spots and dots and things that comp you know can make the give it detail. But <clears throat> there's not really any right or wrong in this. You know, just kind of get it close. And you can do your own kind of pattern on it. It doesn't have to be exact to the to a photo. I mean, they have a general shape, you know, obviously. They kind of have this, like, long, elongated um, shape. But for the most part, it's pretty, pretty simple. All right, I'm going to get some white. And... Now I'm going to go over these with white. And these will really stand out, so... I'm just going to kind of go over the top and leave a little bit of that darker showing through. It doesn't have to be on every single one of these, so maybe some of them I'll just leave the little darker version of itself. I, I was going to say, um, I was saying that I was going to change the saturation on that fabric. I have not done that yet. So if you're like, you know, if you didn't like the super saturated darkness of that, we'll wait a couple of days. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow, but I'm going to have to just upload revisions to all of them. I'm waiting on a, I ordered a sample fabric that should be here in, in a couple of days, actually. So I'll probably do it then when I get the sample fabric because that was kind of the initial sample of just the very limited few colors and I decided I liked it even before I got my my other ones in and did a few a lot of the colors <laughs> and, then, and then just jumped in with both feet <laughs> so before I got my samples back in, I created another six versions of it, you know, and then ordered samples of those. So once I get those samples in, I'll know kind of if what my colors look like on other colors, because I did, you know, blues and other background colors on my fabrics. So anyhow, all right. So I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna here with my light color, and I'm just kind of adding a highlight on one one side of these because they I feel like they're just a little dark so just kind of dabbing that on that's sort of a the highlight side of the mushroom as sort of a, a highlight on them that way they're standing out a little bit better against that background it just felt like they were kind of disappearing I might do it a little bit on this side too okay getting some white <clears throat> a little bit of that Ivory color that I was using before, and just kind of add a little 
glow to these stems just in the middle. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to these ones. Get some yellow here. A little bit of cadmium red to warm it up slightly. Add some yellow to these. Morel one there. That looks good. All right, then a little bit of the burnt sienna with let's get that green gold. I don't have any of my yellow left that I used on the stems of these ones, so I'm just going to use a little green gold there. And we'll use that to, a little bit darker. I just want kind of a dark orangey green. Burnt sienna alone would work too, probably. With just a little glaze. There we go. That's what I need. Just darker. That looks good. That looks really good having that dark at the base of those. And let's go ahead and darken up the base of some of these other ones over here. So. right at the very bottom where it goes down into the dirt. And we'll put some more grasses on here, obviously, to kind of hide away there where they're at, but that gives us a good starting point. Let's go ahead and get some more of the burnt sienna and wait. And I'm going to add streaks in my butterfly here. So from the body out towards the edge of the swings, just going to create these kind of radiating lines. Still had a little bit of that color on my brush, so this is not full strength. And I'm going to come in the opposite direction and just kind of pull short little brush strokes along the edge. Creating little streaks towards the center of my, or the middle of the butterfly. Everything attaches right here at the body, so let's go ahead and put in the little bodies there looks looks like kind of like a smoky blue color I'm gonna get a little white in my burnt umber go ahead and put a little head little body Kind of go ahead and do that little overlap that's happening right there. A little bit of that smoky blue color. And then we can kind of create some longer thin lines that kind of go up into the wings. I'm going to get some of the lighter color again. with that 
in if you need to add white you can to make it more strong those are showing up pretty good for me though so I think we're okay background colors light enough it's showing up pretty good gonna get some burnt umber a little bit of ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of black create that eye on the butterfly a big black eye kind of I'm gonna kind of do some like small little markings sort of where the body is so just a few little dabs and dots where that body is and then just kind of use this color to do the dots and the wings that so there's dots that kind of go all the way around the outside define them kind of almost a line right along the edge and then down a little bit there's more lines and these kind of curve along with the wings so this these lines go kind of in front of these red dots and then there's a few more little lines and dots so keeping them very kind of faint and not really putting a lot of detail into these don't want to get caught up in painting every little dot on these butterflies they're just too small and don't need it okay looks good and then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of define the, this wing just a little bit this one already had it pretty dark good line but that looks good And then get the black, do a dot inside the red, there and there. And then there's dots inside the, in here too. and doing too much but there is kind of a black dot on each one of these kind of right in here so this one's already got it but kind of like right there and then there's two small smaller ones actually kind of three okay looks good and then the antenna are kind of a crazy green color Good. I didn't see any legs on them. There might be some that I'm missing. I'm sure they have legs. That's what I'm saying. But so if you want to put a few legs, you can. I, I don't know that you'd be able to notice them much. You know, they're so tiny. But I'll go ahead and kind of give a nod to a few little legs there. My, they're black too, so might put a few little highlights on them just to kind of have something there and yeah the antenna are both kind of connected I think I'm going to make this one a little bit separated though go ahead and do two there on that one cute Let's go ahead and do the, how are we doing on time? Okay, an hour and a half. Um, let's go ahead and decide what we want to do on this guy. So I think I'm gonna go brighter yellow on him. Gonna get some yellow and some white. And 
and a little bit of glaze. And I'm going to go lighter. Maybe not the whole thing, but maybe just like part of it. And they are super shiny too, so I haven't really worked on that. I need to give them a shine. You gonna do the Inoki? I don't know. I probably should, because I've got one, two, three, four kind of clusters. It'll probably be good to have an odd number. But, I mean, I, I think it looks okay as is, so I'm, I'm going to try to finish these and see how much time I have after. I like the idea. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to get some little bit of magenta in my cad or my burnt orange, make a burnt orange with my cadmium and burnt sienna. And some white. And I'm gonna make my little cluster of seeds along here. I wish it wasn't kind of pointing right at that guy, so I'm gonna put one right up here this way. There, and then let's do another small one right here. I didn't get my grass in the right spot, but I can just kind of fake it. And we'll do one right here. Maybe a little one right here. And let me do some small little bits in here. And it's drying very light, or like, you know, kind of disappearing, so I'm going to get a little bit more white here. And maybe a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to go back in these spots and add little highlights to a few of these. And I'll probably add a little bit of a green stem, too, on a few of them. I'm going to get a little bit of this green and just kind of put a stem out to these ones that don't have stems. That one had one. This one has one. This one. That, there's, okay. Okay. It's all right. <clears throat> and then let's on this morel one here, I'm going to get this yellow. Add a little bit of burnt sienna to just warm it up. I want a color that's lighter than what I've already done on it, so I want to go a value or two lighter. That looks good. And I'm just going to skip around with this now. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I need less paint on my brush. There we go. I'm just really highlighting the kind of the parts that are sticking out the that most like along the edges of these little ridges that are happening here. These little pockets. Get the 
white and a little bit of glaze and we'll put a little white highlight along the edges of these I don't like that being in separate directions I was trying to think of where the light would hit a little bit of this glaze on the top of this mushroom. We already did a little bit of burnt sienna, but just a little bit more there. We get a little bit of white and add a little highlight along this one. Also add a shadow on him, so I'm gonna get some my blender here. Make sure you keep these paint brushes that are off to the side wet while you're waiting. You know, while they're sitting, not being used. Uh, I think I'm just gonna use burnt sienna here and just darken up this back side of this one. a little bit at the bottom. Okay. And I can go even darker by using more paint, less glaze. <laughs> that was a big huff there from Fitzy. He's just, <sighs> are we done yet? Okay, and then I'm gonna glaze on the ground, add some shadows at the base of my mushrooms. This just helps ground them, and then we'll add some highlights down here, but this will just help give them a little bit more structure. And then let's go ahead and glaze on this guy, too. So let's say this is our, our light's kind of been coming from that direction, so I'll go ahead and glaze on this side of him. And you see, if I glaze it right, I'm not covering the design at all. I'm just adding this darker shadow along here. It's going to be really effective on him. And now he's going to look like he's three-dimensional just by adding this little bit darker tone. And then we added the highlight to the tips on this side. I didn't talk about that when I was doing it, but um, so most of these highlight little bits that I did with the white are like on this side of it. And then when we glaze on this side of it, now suddenly he's got more depth and dimension and he's rounded out okay let's go ahead and do really dark back here on him I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt or uh, ultramarine blue to make him even darker there we go adding blue to your shadow blue is a, the coolest color in your palette so not cool as in you know, Fonzie but um uh, <laughs> cool as in warm and light colors, you know, <laughs> he's going to give you the most um, dramatic shadows. There's a little bit of blue in them. Right. Can you make Doing the, the jukebox play for free? <laughs> Hit it just right. That's right. <laughs> I need to get a little leather jacket for him. comment tonight. <laughs> Get a leather jacket. 
like it. Okay, getting more of this blue. I'm going to use the blue on my glass caps here. What do we call them? They were something else. They weren't glass caps. Um, Parrot something. Wax cap? Wax, wax caps. That's it. Wax caps. Wax, wax caps. Wax mushrooms. <sighs> okay. I swear I have not been drinking. All right, getting some of the white, adding it to my bright yellow, and then I'm going to go in here and add my little bits of mossy goodness here with this blender brush. It's just going to dab it on in different areas. It, if I do it right kind of near the bottom of my mushrooms it just obscures that base of them and makes them look like they're living in this nice little mossy garden right this brush does a great job of giving me texture too i can just tap it and get some texture or i can kind of flip it kind of flick it and it'll look like grassy kind of bits i do want some you know the blue lichen like it kind of has that blue gray color I think I want some of that in here I think it needs it so I'm going to add ultramarine blue and white I'm just going to add some little blue bits down here using the tip of this round number two and just adding little flecks of blue and if I you know can go a little bit darker I kind of don't have any left but get a little bit of the darker blue and can give it some shadow that's gonna really pull the whole thing together and I think what I'm gonna do also is put some of this red in this area too I really like this color scheme. It's very neutral for me. I don't normally go with browns and tans and stuff, but I'm trying to branch out this year. This is my year to like limit my color palettes and try to go with a little, go outside my comfort zone with my colors, color choices. I think I will add those little, I don't think it's going to take a long time to add those little glass, whatever they are called. Noki. Noki. I'm going to use blue for them. And they're just like all crammed in together. So I'm just going to do a bunch of little, little stems there. Get the little white on my brush. So I had the blue. Now I've got the white and it's pretty clumped up there. And I'm just going to do these little bits here and I think that's all I'm gonna do I'm not gonna do a lot of shading and stuff but I do want to have some of them overlap overlapping so I don't want them to like separate it out yeah that's cute he's cute Okay. Maybe do a few that are kind of rogue, so it's not so perfectly formed. Let's do one. So I'm trying to break up this shape, right? So right now I've got this shape going on. I kind of want it to let's do one down here. Maybe one way out here. That's good. Okay. 
just so that it's not so matchy matchy. Getting some of that blue. Using that for the stem. Using this blue kind of to shadow on them a little bit. Is that the right shape? I don't have a picture of them yep. in front of me. Yep. I'm just going off of memory here. <clears throat> Which is dangerous. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, I think it's close. Go like that. Ah, yes, okay. So some of them are kind of rounded at the top. And then the ones that are facing us are going to look like little round balls. All right, so I'm going to round it off the tops of them a little bit. Looks good. Okay. Thank you, Ann. I'm just rounding these off a little bit. Cute. white to the stems. Just a few of them. So make them stand out. Started with the blue so that I've already got my shadow in there, you know. So now wherever I leave that blue, it's going to look like a shadow. And then when I add this highlight, it'll pop them forward. There we go. All right, so let's add a few grasses and we'll call it good. Um, I think I'm gonna add some light to my butterflies too. So I'm gonna add some of this light, light blue yellow that I just added here into my butterflies. Um, seeing some around outside of the wings, a little bit on the body, a little bit in here. Some dots. Yeah, that'll just kind of help pull that color up here because it's looking pretty dark up in here. So. It's kind of a light color around the dot dark circles. A little bit. just a little bit more of the highlight color of my morel here just on some of these that I want the spines to stick out a little bit more or spines I don't know what these are little cells whatever you get the idea ribs yes And then 
Yes, I was talking about this red color here, using some of that in my grass. So they have these little bits that stick up sometimes that are, I think they are a, a fungus of some sort. Speaking of, have you guys been watching the new HBO show? The Last of Us, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn good. Of course, I'm a zombie fan, so my son Big is responsible. I was not before, and my son Spencer, or not, yes, Spencer and Jordan. I think it was Jordan that was watching it. Was watching The Living Dead, The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, um, a few years back when it was, you know, popular. Still living in the house. He was a teenager. And I'm like, why are we watching that? And he's like, it's good. And I was like, all right, well. And I just happened to be in the room and doing something. And it was like after about, you know, 15 minutes, like, why is he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Who's, who's that guy? Why is he doing that? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it got to be where we were watching it together. I don't know what. You knew that? He's yeah. a bad influence on me. You went Stacy on him? <laughs> oh, Stacy. You better. I don't want to tell on you. I do I have a friend named Stacy that we, we I don't go to the movies with her anymore except for I haven't been to the movies in forever so I don't go to the movies period anymore so that makes it doesn't mean anything when I say that but um, but yeah we joke about we she she knows she's yeah. she's totally funny about it because we'll go to the movie and she'll just be like you know 10 minutes and well, why are they doing that I'm I'm watching the same movie as you I don't know I'm pretty sure they're gonna let us know eventually I'm using really dark colors here to kind of give it some contrast again yeah so funny so she's she's super person oh yeah she's awesome she's awesome she I just you don't want to go to the movies with her mm -hmm. she can't talk through it Mm -hmm. We went to the help with a big group of ladies, and I mean, we were all just bawling our eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure I didn't sit next to her because I'd read the book and I knew she was going to be asking me all kinds of questions. Is this like the book? I think she had actually read it too. I don't know. It's just funny. Mm -hmm. So I will say, I will say doing that grasses here with this light green. What were you gonna say? At least of the little bit that I have watched, The Last of Us uh -huh. with you, out of the probably couple hours, uh -huh. there was maybe five minutes of zombies. Right. Yeah, that's what I'd like. It's a story about people. It's not a story about zombies. There's zombies in it, but it's... And it's got the, the Mandalorian dude. Right, that's, character. yeah. I can't remember his name. He was on Saturday Night Live last week, too. He's good. He's in everything anymore. It's funny. Mm, I think he goes by Mandalorian dude. Mandalorian dude is his new yeah, moniker. officially changed to that. <laughs> It's just like I answer to, I can't remember, Pedro, I think is his first name. can't think of his last yeah. name. Pedro something. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I go by Pedro or Pedro Mandalore. Pascal. Pascal, okay, that's it. I'm using burnt umber here to tone these down. They're just a little too bright white all over. They were kind of pulling the attention all on them. They were being dramatic. Tone it down over here. There we go. Now they kind of go with everything else. And then we'll add little bits of white, but not so bright, bright, bright. Okay. Oh, yes, and 
Angela has to be sure that Fitz isn't watching the zombie movie. Oh, I can't. He can't watch them. He watches the, he watches TV with me. And he does. He watches the zombies things, and I have to cover his eyes because he gets. He doesn't really react to it, but I can tell he's kind of gets tense. Like he's, you know, he barks at dogs and stuff on TV. So I'm just. I don't want him to see that. He doesn't need to see that. <laughs> I'm a good dog mom. He doesn't need to. He also has a video of him. His baby had to be washed last week. <laughs> and I have a video on my TikTok. Of, or not, not TikTok, Facebook. My Facebook page. You didn't do a TikTok right now? I didn't do him on TikTok. But, um, no, I need to. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty darn funny. Him, he's pretty upset about his baby being in the washing machine. Okay, so we're getting pretty close here. Just adding final little bits. I think I'm going to add one more layer of splatters, and we'll call it good because it's Valentine's Day, and Mark wants to go watch Oak Island, and I'm being going to be a good wife. You do the, do the splatters. Hey, ring your bells over there. There you go. It'll be this <laughs> week's oh. super chat. <laughs> Nice, I like it. <laughs> we got a super chat. Well, yeah, we oh, did. sweet. So we got a super chat happy from Valentine's Day. From Laura it says Happy Valentine's Day. Aww. Thanks for hanging out with us, you two. Aww. Well, thank you thank for you, hanging Laura. out with us. Yes, thank you. And then we got a super chat from Cindy, and Aww, Cindy said you, Happy Cindy. Valentine's Day. Aww. Love this painting. Good. I'm so glad. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for that, Cindy. And then we got from, from oh, Peggy. What? And Peggy says, sweet. I love your Valentine shrooms. It's supposed to be not <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Angela and Mark. Shrooms. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, when I first read it, you know, she put shoots accidentally, and I was like, that must be some tradition in another country. <laughs> I don't know what a Valentine shoot is, but okay. <laughs> Valentine shrooms. Love it. Okay, there we go. So I added a little bit of the pink to the color, a little bit of red, the cadmium red light. But yeah, he turned out good. I like it. Very neutral palette this time. Browns and tans and a and little bit of little pop of green here and little pop of red. So kind of really actually kind of a complementary color scheme if you think of it that way with the little, if you include the red and the green in there. So... I really like how it turned out, though. Really yeah, fun. Super. Hope you guys liked it. Thank you for hanging out with us on a Valentine's night, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your evening and week, and we'll be back next week. We are painting a desert, I think. Is it the desert or the flowers? I don't know. One or the other. But I've got two left this month, and I can't remember <laughs> what, what I'm painting. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, be sure to share with me your line work. If you work on this, that's your homework for this week, line work. Mark. Use the tag TAG, Thankful Art Goals 23 lines. Um, if you do some line work, let me see it. Mm -hmm. See if you can get your lines to meet up without seeing where they meet. Do a circle, do some squigglies, do some straight lines and some curved lines. Okay, that's your. See how thin you can get them. See how long you can get a, your line. Okay, do. Do all those things. These little homework things, they really add up. I mean, they're silly kind of little things, but there's things you can do. And if you only have five minutes to sit down, you know, grab your paintbrush and do just a little something to practice each week. And the better you get at these little things, the more you can put them all together for a bigger painting like this. That's the goal, at least. So hope you guys have been enjoying that. And uh, leave a comment for uh, what you'd like to see next time as far as, like, homework projects. If there's something that you are wanting to uh, know how to do, I'd be happy to kind of show those in our little short lessons. All right, that's it. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.